What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Hope everyone's doing well. Today is day two of us being allowed to get outside and actually go to the beach and go for kite sessions. There she is. Um, but today we're going to do a fun little video. I'm going to basically review all the kite boards that I've owned over the past 16 or 17 years and kind of touch on the most memorable ones that I've owned that really helped chisel me into becoming the kite board that I am today. So it should be a fun little uh, dive into the history bank. So let's go. One, three, five, go! Coming from the wild, wild west indeed. Okay, so first board we're going to talk about, we're jumping all the way back to around 2003. And here it is. Dun, 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 dun. This was made by a company called Underground Kiteboarding, I think. And this was my first ever, like, pretty good kiteboard. Pretty light, pretty decent little shape. And this was a board that I got when I kind of first started figuring out how to ride and I could go up in and I was kind of becoming self-sufficient at kiteboarding. That was kind of the first good board that I got and it was a big deal because I was like sick. I finally have a board that works and can help me continue progressing. So yeah, I've had that since I think 2003, 2004. Okay, and next up we're jumping to 2005. And this actually isn't a board that I rode, but it's a super meaningful board to me because, check it out. Wow. So basically, mm -hmm. this is a Mauricio Pro Whippica board. And if you've been kiteboarding for a very long time, you probably remember the Whippica brand. They were like some of the, they're basically OGs of kiteboarding. They were one of the first brands to exist and were pretty influential in the very beginning. But yeah, this is basically Mauricio Abreu's Pro model. And I got this in 2005 when Andre Philip, the big homie and the co-founder of Tona Kiteboarding, was shooting a film called Autofocus. If you haven't seen that, it's a super influential film as far as our wake style and park riding goes. They were the guys who were basically pushing that side of sport back then. And our Andre and the whole crew did a, an amazing job at showcasing that side of sport. And I basically got this board uh, as one of the broken boards, one of the many broken boards that they got that they basically broke during the shoot in 2005. When it comes down to sliders and not only hitting them, but doing tricks off of them, you know, it's, you gotta come in with a different mindset, you know. When you're gonna go do a trick, you know you gotta pay your dues. And when you do it, they're gonna hurt like hell. Oh. Um, and it was a super cool time for me because I was a young kid basically watching them film, shoot, build stuff every single day. And I got each one of them to sign it and kind of leave some stoke for me. And this was a big moment for me as a kid because I was probably 11 years old and having peeps having like actual pro riders leave things like uh if you keep riding like this soon you'll have my job like it was just super motivating as a young kid to not only be around those guys hang with them see how they did everything but also to get like a little piece of history to just remind me to keep chugging along and trying to chase the dream of becoming a pro kiteboarder so this was super influential for me back in 2005. okay so now we're still kind of in the 2000 for 2005-ish era and this was a major big deal basically this is a custom board by Derek Macho who if you guys don't know is actually the founder of Tona Kiteboarding um, and he was he has been a big time shaper for a long long time and back in the 2004-2005 era there weren't very good production boards at all like if you were good at kiteboarding and you could go up in and you wanted to do a few tricks you basically needed a custom board and Derek Camacho was one of the top guys who was making custom boards at the time and this was the first ever custom board that I got from him basically sponsored by him way back in the day my name is Jake Kelsick I'm 11 years old and I live in Mexico it's a 116 centimeter long board by 37 centimeters wide and yeah, this thing was a little beast, man. This was my go-to board that I was ripping around on as a little kid at like 11, 12 years old. And this really allowed me to, again, kind of keep progressing and really push my riding as a, as a young little kid. So yeah, pretty cool to still have this in the quiver. 
Okay, and then next up, we're gonna jump to, I think, 2006, 2007. So I was probably like 13, 14 years old around here. And this was, again, my, another big jump in basically gear abilities. This was my second custom board from Derek Camacho. So from Derek Camacho. I'm not sure what size this one is, but it's slightly bigger than the one I showed you guys before. And this was set up to be a board for riding bindings and boots and hitting rails and hitting ramps and stuff like that. Cause that's kind of when I first started experimenting with this stuff. So it had a nice slider base on the bottom. And if you look closely, it has like all these white patches. Cause basically that's where I like tried to hop onto a rail and didn't make it and basically destroyed the front of my board. And luckily my friend who's in Antigua, Nikolai, was super good at fixing boards. So as you can see, this one got its fair share of uh, needing to get fixed. But this was like, again, a pretty big deal because this was the first board that was set up for riding boots and was set up for hitting rails and sliding up the beach and doing all stuff like that. So this board really helped shape a lot of my style and riding ability that I still love and do today. So yeah, big ups to Derek for, you know, being a boss and shaping awesome stuff way back in the days. Okay, and next up, we're gonna jump all the way to 2010 because I kind of rode Derek Camacho's boards for quite a few years. And I can't really remember all the history between then and 2010, but 2010 was a big year for me because that was technically the first year of me becoming a sponsored rider. And this was one of the first boards that I got. Basically, Cabrina Custom 136, uh, Andre Phillips signature model. And again, if you've been kiting for a while, this was like one of the boards to get back in 2010 because it was designed by Dre, who was basically killing the game as far as wake style and park style riding goes. And this was one of like the best boards to get back in the days. And for me, it's a special board just because this was the first board or the first piece of equipment that I got as a quiver. So basically I got sponsored by Cabrina back in 2010 and I was around 16, 17 years old. And it was a super big deal because I actually got a full quiver of kites and boards for the year. And it was my first time ever actually owning brand new kiteboarding gear as a kid. So yeah, 2010 was a big year for me. And I rode this board pretty much on everything. Kickers, rails, beach, all sorts of weird stuff. And it was a sick board. It did have one little issue though, the inserts kept popping out. Um, so I kind of burnt through these boards quite a lot as a young kid shredding because I'd always blow the inserts out. But besides that, this board produced a lot of pretty epic sessions and amazing memories. Okay, and now we're going to jump to present day, 2019, 2020, the year we're in right now, right? <laughs> uh, and this is basically the evolution of Derek Camacho's custom boards. This is a total pop. This is almost my signature model. One day I'll actually get my name on it. But this is the evolution of those custom boards way back in the day. This is Tono's actual first shape that they released. Um, and it's still one of the go-to boards within the quiver. And this is a board that I ride pretty much all the time. And this is just a refined board as far as production goes, as far as shape goes, as far as strength and everything goes. It has awesome ABS rails, so it's pretty much bomb proof. You could almost build a house with this thing. It's got slider base, so it's designed for sliding up the beach, hitting rails, hitting kickers, and it should never ever wear out on you. So yeah, this is kind of the board I ride pretty much every session if I feel like riding boots, and I've been super stoked on it. Looks good, rides great, and it's cool to kind of see the progression from way back then to today. Okay, yeah, and we're still in present day today. We're gonna to talk about the most recent board in Toner's lineup, which is the Toner Joyride. And basically, this is just designed to be a free ride board, mainly designed for riding straps. Um, and it's just kind of an easy hop on, have fun board that we recently added to the quiver. And this is the board that I pretty much go to for strap sessions, free ride sessions, where I just wanna go out, have a blast and not be restricted or stuck to my board. And I've been pretty stoked on it. Um, yeah, so right now the tonal quiver is looking pretty good. And it's just really cool to kind of look back on all these boards and see the progression. Boards these days are so well made that kiteboarders can kind of learn quickly and have so much fun. A lot easier than it was back in the day. So that's roughly a quick breakdown of all the boards I've owned over the past 17 years of being a kiteboarder. <laughs> Okay guys, so yeah, that pretty much sums up today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. But before you go, I wanna ask you guys a question. 
drop a comment down below with your favorite kiteboard, the one you're riding right now, and also how long you've been kiteboarding. Just curious to know, you know what you guys are into and how long you've kind of been obsessed with kiteboarding. Uh, and yeah, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe because we can now go outside and tap into the ocean and the beach again. So I'll hopefully have a lot more videos coming soon. And if you want to see those videos before they go live on YouTube, uh, check out my Patreon page. All that stuff is linked down in the description below. And Patreon just allows you guys to kind of be more connected with what I'm doing. And you get to see stuff before it goes live on YouTube. And you also play a huge role in helping support every piece of content that I put out online. So yeah guys, big thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you guys are doing well and I'll see you guys soon in another video. Peace, love and big ups.